Hello everybody, this is the Lone Coder, and welcome to a new JavaScript tutorial. Today's tutorial is all about keyboard events. So for those of you who don't know what DOM events are, or have learned about them and don't really remember, we're going to do a quick review, but if you're already familiar with them, I put the timestamps in the description so you can skip ahead. An event is basically anything that happens on a web page that we might want to react to in our JavaScript. This could be a button being clicked, text being selected, a form being submitted, all these things can be considered events. But our script doesn't automatically know about these events or know how to react to them, so this is where event listeners come in. An event listener will wait for a specified event to be fired on a specified element, usually a DOM object, and then call the event handler which does something in response to that event. So I have an HTML document here with no content in it, but we're going to create a button with the text, click me inside. Then I'm going to add a script tag here at the bottom for our JavaScript. And of course, the first thing we need to do is select that button using the DOM. Now that we have access to that button, there are a couple of ways we could proceed, but the method I'm going to use is the add event listener method, which is defined on the DOM object for us. So using the dot operator, we can call add event listener just like this. And now we need to pass in two parameters. The first parameter is the type of event that we're listening for, so in our case it's going to be a click event. And the second parameter is the event handler that will run whenever this button is clicked. So I'm going to use an arrow function here. And inside of it we're just going to console log the button got clicked. Now over here in the browser we can see our very attractive button right here. And if we open the DevTools and go to the console, which I'll also zoom up on, Whenever I click that button, you can see right here that button got clicked was logged to the console. So that's the basic functionality of events, but there's one more thing we need to talk about before we get to keyboard events, and that is the window object. The window object is the browser's global or top level object, and by global I mean that we can access it from anywhere inside of client-side JavaScript without defining it ourselves. As you might have guessed, it contains data and functions relating to the current browser window, and if we add an event listener to this object, it will listen for that event on the entire web page as long as it is in focus. So I'm going to replace this button variable here that we have defined with window, just like that. And I'm also going to get rid of this line. And I'm going to change the text from button got clicked to window got clicked. And this event should fire anytime we click anywhere on the window, as we'll see right now. So if I click that button, we do see window got clicked because this button is on the window. But if we also click this empty space here, window got clicked is logged to the console again. So for keyboard events, that window object is going to carry our event listener. So let's just clear everything from this script and add a new event listener to the window. Now there are two keyboard events that we can listen for on the window object and they are key up and key down. A key up event will be fired whenever you press a key and then let up on it, while key down will be fired as soon as a key is pressed down. So basically, key up will wait for the key to be released before firing. Typically, we would use key down, but I'm going to demonstrate by adding both types to the window object. So let's start with the key down event. Add our function. And we will just log the words a key was pressed down. Now over in the browser, if I refresh, and then I press any key, we see in the console a key was pressed down and I just pressed the space bar. So I'll press the A key, the R key, number keys. Anytime I press a key, we see a key was pressed down. Then we'll just duplicate this code right here and change the type of event from key down to key up and change this text here to, um, I mean, it wouldn't make sense to say a key was pressed up. So we'll just say a key was how about let up? And now back in the browser, if I refresh and press a key, I'm holding down the space bar right now, and you can see a key was pressed down is being printed hundreds and hundreds of times. Now if I press it and then let up on it, we see that that event was now fired. Because I'm not holding it down anymore, I let it up, and now the key up event was fired. So what if we want to know what key was pressed, because we might not want to act upon every single one. A video game might only respond to the arrow keys and the space bar. Another web app will save only when you press S or undo when you press Z. And the answer is that every event handler callback can optionally accept an argument called the event object that contains information about the event that we can use to determine things like that. 
So let's just delete this key up event listener. And then we can take the event object here as a parameter. And most people will call it EVT or just E. And we're going to go with E. And now we can use this event object anywhere inside of our callback. So here I'll just console.log the entire thing. Now when we go back to the browser and press a key, we see this object right here. And it's a fairly large object. And there's two properties in here that we need to pay attention to. And the first one is the key property, which contains the actual character outputted by the key that I pressed, which in this case is H. And then we have the code property, which contains the actual name of that key on the keyboard. In our case, it's key H. So in our code, let's console log both of these properties so we can see them together with different keys. So we will console log key and then pass in e dot key and then next we'll just duplicate this line and change this to code and then e dot code so now back in the browser if we press a key first i'll refresh now if we press a key we see both of them displayed so the key property is d while code is key d and this may be a little confusing. So the most obvious example is with the spacebar. So I'm gonna press that right now. And key appears to be empty while code says space. So that's what I mean by key will show the actual character that we typed, which in this case we can't see because it's a space, while code is the actual name of the key on the keyboard. So that's the basics of keyboard events. And we now know enough to start today's project which for lack of a better name, I'm calling Traversing Boxes, as you can see right here. And it's a very simple app, but one that's actually quite satisfying to make. And you can see the controls here. If I hit the space bar, it adds this ugly green box on the web page. If I do it again, it adds more boxes that are a lighter color. And the reason they're different colors is because this darker green one is the currently active one. And I can use the arrow keys to actually cycle through these. And if I go to the last one and I try to go right, it'll take me back to the beginning. And if I go to the first one and try to go left, it'll take me to the end. So let's go ahead and start building this. I'm going to clear this script first. And actually, it'll just clear everything from this document. And then we're going to leave the body empty for now, except for a section element. And then under this, we'll link to our script, which is just going to be connected to the app.js file that you see up here. So the first thing I think we should handle is the styles, and those are fairly simple. And so each box is going to be, as you probably guessed, a div. And so first we need to style the section. So let's start with that in our style element. And so we'll select the section and we're going to set display to flex. And then we're going to need to set flex wrap to wrap so that when there's too many boxes for a row it wraps around to another row and then we're going to set justify content to be centered next we need to style the boxes themselves so i'm just going to select them like this and i'm going to set display to be inline block and that's because we want the divs to not take up an entire block of space. We want them to be inline, but at the same time, we want them to respect margin and so on. The width and the height are both going to be 200 pixels, and we're going to set a margin of 20 pixels. And then the background color is going to be this color that I have here on my other monitor. It's going to be RGB 9, 216, and 9, and that's just this light green color that you see here. And then lastly, we're going to set a transition on them of 0.25 seconds now when a particular box is active we're going to need to set different styles for it then and we're going to select it by using dot active because whatever box is active is going to have an active class on it and for this the background color is going to be slightly darker so uh, it's going to be 13 138 13 and by the way i just got these colors by using the VS Code color picker, if you're wondering. And they're going to make them slightly larger by setting the transform property to be scale of 1.25. That should be a good size. Now we actually don't have any boxes to display right now, so let's add some right here to test the styles. So we're going to do three of them. And let's add the active class to the middle one. Now back in the browser, you can see these three enormous boxes and the middle one does in fact have the active class on it. And so I've zoomed out and now you can see that they're a more reasonable size 
and this one is slightly larger than the other ones and it's a darker color because it has the active class on it. So now we get to the fun part which is the JavaScript but first I'm going to remove all these boxes from our section element here. So the first thing we need to do in here is set two variables called position and length and we're going to set position to be one because there is no zero with box we have to start at one and then we're going to set length to be zero because we start out with no boxes now let's add our event to the window so that's going to be window .add event listener and we're going to be listening for a key down event and then let's take the event object and pass that to our callback function then we're going to make a switch statement which we'll pass event.code into and we're going to make cases for the left and right arrow keys and then space and backspace for creating and removing boxes so first one is going to be case arrow left which is the name of the left arrow key and in that the first thing we need to do is check if the length is greater than zero because we can't move if there's nothing to move to and if it's greater than zero, then we're going to call a function that is currently not defined called move right, or I'm sorry, move left. Then of course we need to add in our break statement. And we're going to do this for the left and right arrow keys and the space and backspace as I said. So I'm just going to skip forward and you'll see the code when I'm done. So I made all these switch cases. So I made arrow left, arrow right, which is the exact same as arrow left, but with a different function. And then we have space, which calls a function called add box, which again is not defined yet. And then we have backspace. And first thing we do is check if the length is greater than zero, because once again, we cannot delete something that doesn't exist. And then we call a function called remove box. So now let's go down and define those functions. So first let's define add box. And the first thing we need to do in here is create the box and CSS will handle the sizing and the styling. All we need to do is create an empty div element and append that to the section element inside the HTML. So to create an element, we use document.createElement and then we pass in the name of the element that we want to create, which in this case is div. Next, we need to select the section element in the HTML so that we can append that box to it. So I have that section selected and all that we need to do now is append that new div to that section using section.append and then we just pass in new div. And there's actually two more things we need to do. First, if the length is zero, so basically if this box that we're adding is the very first one, then we're going to automatically add the active class to it. And we do that by saying new div dot class list dot add, and then we pass in the name of the class, which is active. And then finally, we just increment the length by one. Now let's move on to the function remove box. So in this function, it's going to remove the last box out of the boxes. So the first thing we need to do is check if our current position on those boxes is equal to the length. So in other words, if our position is at the last box, then the first thing we need to do is move left before we can remove anything. We need to move out the way so that we can remove the last box. And then we can just simply remove that box. So we'll do that by using document.querySelector. And we're going to look for the last div, which we can do by using div colon last dash child and then we can call dot remove on that box and then finally we just need to decrement the length so now we're going to move on to the function move left and the first thing we need to do is select the box that's currently active using the position variable that we defined at the top and then remove the active class from that so we're going to do that by again using document dot query selector and we're going to look for div nth of type and then with a string template literal, we are going to pass in the position. And then we can just access the class list and remove the active class. Next, we need to decrement the position. Then we're going to add some logic to check that if we're at the beginning of those boxes, and if we try to move left, then we need to go to the last box instead of one to the left because there is no box to the left. So to do that, we just check if the current position is less than one. And if it is, then we are going to set the position to be the length. And so if we are at the first box and that would be a position of one and we try to move left, it will decrement position. 
and then if it's less than one then we set it to the length and that will basically set it to be the last box and then finally we just need to select the box that we are currently at using position and then make it active so i have the box that we're supposed to be at selected using nth of type with a value of the position and then we just need to call class list again dot add active so the move right function is basically going to be almost identical to the move left function except for a few things so i'm just going to paste the entire thing in there and the only two things we need to change are this line and this if statement so instead of decrementing position we're going to increment it and then we need to check if position is greater than the length and if it is then we are going to set the position to be one and this will ensure that if we try to go too far to the right it'll wrap us around back to the beginning so let's go back to the browser and see if it's working so i'm just going to press the space bar here and you can see that dark green box displayed to the web page and if i press spacebar again i see another one and another one and another one and it just wraps around like we did with flexbox and then i'm going to use the arrow keys to go to the right oh we got an error uh oh i misspelled position so let's go back to our code somewhere okay so now i have fixed all the typos in the code that i made so now we are going to add some boxes and we can finally move to the right and left so don't make those typos like i did and so this seems to be working fine. I'm going to close the dev tools and we can add as many boxes as we want and we can also remove them and then we can cycle through them and everything seems to be working fine. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, please like and subscribe. I'm a brand new channel and I need a lot of support. And if you didn't like it, then feel free to comment and say what I did wrong, what I could improve on. But anyways, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Uh.